this video I'm gonna talk about the physiology of circulation and specifically splanchnic circulation and skin circulation. Let's start. So splanchnic circulation, it's a blood that goes to the GI tract. So when it goes to the stomach, small intestine, large intestine, we call it splanchnic circulation. And uh, during the rest, which means that the parasympathetic nervous system is activated, the uh, blood flow that goes to the GI tract is about 1,500 milliliter per minute. So if you want to compare it with the skeletal muscle, that the blood flow during the rest was much less than the blood flow during the activity. Like splanchnic circulation, it's exactly opposite side of the um, uh, circulation in the skeletal muscle. Uh, so we're gonna explain it here I made a table of each arteries that go to the different part of the GI tract and I'm pretty sure you guys know it much better than me so when they arrive to the tissue we, when these branches they arrive to the tissue of the GI tract so you know that we have a muscular layer then submucosa and then mucosa these small arterioles pass all these mus muscular uh, layers then they go to the submucosa and the branches the arterioles branches goes to the uh, mucosal layer which we uh, see it here here as a willow so one arterial comes they make a capillary bed and they exchange the material and they absorb all the nutrition that they need and they go to the venous system and also to the lymph node uh, lymph system and lymph node so now we know uh, what is the structure and what is the basic of this splanchnic circulation let's see how the body control this splanchnic circulation first and the most important one is the effect of the metabolic activity there so when we eat something uh, our gi tract start to work so the stomach start to releasing stuff they start to releasing digestive uh, material and enzymes so the activity increase there and this activity depends on the, this active transport so there are we have two type of channels so uh, passive channels and active channels the passive channels they don't need energy and they just goes through the uh, difference between the osm uh, osmolarity of two places however in active transport uh, there these uh, transporting channels they need uh, ATP and uh, for working with ATP you need oxygen and also energy uh, so they consume oxygen and energy uh, this absorption that happening inside the GI tract which means that the food from the GI tract inside the GI tract they goes to the capillaries uh, these uh, transportation make a hyper osmolality uh, environment and when the environment is hyperosmolar, which means that the concentration of the material there, the concentration of the protein and the material that is inside that capillary are increased, uh, they can cause hyperosmolarity and this hyperosmolarity cause high blood flow to that region. Uh, the other factor is the hormonal effect. Uh, inside the GI tract there are some cells that they release hormones they release hormone to increase the activity of the GI tract they uh, release hormone to increase the absorption or help in the digestion and uh, many other factors that we're gonna uh, talk about it in a GI physiology uh, so during the digestion they release these uh, hormones and these hormones can increase the blood flow as well so the first factor was absorption uh, they can cause hyperosmolarity uh, the second factor is this hormonal effect and uh, also this act increasing in uh, oxygen need uh, and also the energy so they can increase the carbon dioxide and increase the carbon dioxide can cause vasodilation as we remember uh, in uh, our previous lectures uh, and the other factor is that circulation uh, the in the GI tract is not activated in the whole GI tract all the time so our body is smart they know that if they want to work uh, properly they need to focus on the same uh, one region so if the food is inside the stomach they prefer to 
give more blood to that region so when the food is a storm in inside the stomach uh, more blood goes to the stomach when the uh, food is inside the small intestine more uh, blood goes to the small intestine so they act very smartly in that manner uh, and uh, the other uh, factor that can control the splanchnic circulation is neural regulation so we say that when the parasympathetic nervous system affect on a digestive system they cause vasodilation. However, when the sympathetic nervous system effect on the splanch splanchnic circulation, they effect on an alpha-1 receptor and they cause vasoconstriction. And when they cause vasoconstriction, uh, less blood will go to the um, uh, GI tract. So when we do exercise, our body needs that blood for a skeletal muscle so that really makes sense that they don't let the blood to go to the GI tract so the blood that was in a GI tract will go to the skeletal muscle the second factor is when we eat the parasympathetic nervous system activated via the vagal nerve or pelvic nerve that they uh, control the different place of the GI tract and indirectly by increase the motility and secretion of the intestine they increase the blood flow to that region so what is the effect of exercise I already talked about it so when the skeletal muscle are activated sympathetic nervous system activated and they cause vasoconstriction and less blood go to the GI tract and splanchnic circulation is like a storage place in our body so when we are at rest more blood is in inside the GI tract however when our body need more blood for example just imagine uh, someone is in accident and they losing blood so there was some blood inside the GI tract and that blood will return back to the circulation to give it to the more important organs that's why for example when someone uh, has a hemorrhage one of the places that are at the risk of cell death and necrosis is GI tract this is one of the first places that can damage because they give all their blood uh, to other regions to for example to uh, our heart to our kidney uh, to our brain which need more blood and uh, for them it's more important uh, to give blood to that regions during the critical time so uh, the second uh, thing that we want to talk about is the cutaneous circulation uh, the circulation that goes to our skin so this system is very cool actually so uh, they act as a air conditioner inside our body so what do i mean by that so they control the body temperature so in normal situation when uh, the temperature outside is equal to the temperature of inside our body so in that situation the blood flow to the cutaneous and to the skin is 100 to 300 milliliter per minute however when outside the body is cooler than inside the body for example uh, it's like zero degree outside uh, so it means that temperature outside the body is less so our body doesn't want to lose the temperature of the blood so how can they help with that they uh, keep the blood inside the um, core of our body inside the for example GI tract uh, they keep it there and they don't let it to come to the skin so, because if they come to the skin there will be exchange between the outside temperature and inside temperature but if they don't come here there is no lose of the temperature of the blood that's why when you see someone that comes from the cool uh, weather they have a pale skin for example if you uh, go and uh, like uh, skiing uh, in the mountain your skin get much paler than when you're in a summer and like doing activity and exercise during the exercise our body uh, uh, our skin get much uh, uh, reddish that's that's because of this uh, cooling system uh, and during the high temperature when outside is much warmer than inside for example we are in a place that uh, the temperature is like 40 degree so six liter per mean of blood they can go to skin and they exchange uh, uh, the temperature with outside and make our body cooler uh, we have two type of uh, skins ap uh, apical skin and non-apical skin apical skin is the blood that is inside our face for example on the lips on the nose on the ears uh, 
uh, and they have two specific things. First, they have more capillary than the skin of the, uh, our trunk and limbs. So they have more capillary. It means that if we get a biopsy of our skin from our, for example, upper limbs and compare it with the same region uh, on, um, on our lips or on our nose, we can see that in the nose, uh, the number of the capillaries are much more than the number of capillary in the skin of our hand. Uh, and that, uh, not hand, we can say, for example, like upper limb, because in hand, the circulation is a bit more than other part, but still it's less than our, in the skin of our face. So the reason for that is the high surface to volume ratio of the blood supply. The second factor, which is very important, is the uh, arteriovenous anastomosis. So when someone comes from the cold weather, you can see that their face is much uh, paler than the skin of the, uh, for example, hands and body. And why is that? Because of this AV anastomosis. I'm going to talk about it more in detail. And the way that they active is that sympathetic nervous system activated. They cause vasoconstriction and the, uh, there is a fall in the blood flow to the skin. And in that way, they reduce the heat loss. Uh, that's what happening during the when we are in a cold weather and non-apical uh, skin so first they don't have that much capillary inside the skin and they have a lack of this AV anastomosis I'm going to show it in the next slide in detail and there are two major factors that can control the blood flow to the cutaneous circulation of our body uh, uh, like I mean in the trunk and the limbs uh, norepinephrine cause vasoconstriction and acetylcholine cause vasodilation and secretion of the enzyme from the sweat glands they cause releasing vasoactive substance like bradykinin and they can cause vasodilation so let's see it in an example first of all this is the structure of the skin we have epidermis we have dermis and we have hypodermis and all these capillaries are inside the dermis so here we have sweet glands we have capillaries we have arterioles venules and look at them this is the ap color skin the one that we have it in our face and in our nose lips uh, so how does it work so we can see that first we have this capillary and we have one anastomosis uh, between the arteriole and venule so this anastomosis let the blood to pass the system faster so they don't let them to go to the uh, capillaries in the capillaries the speed of the blood is much less and they are closer to the skin so uh, they they can lose the they can change the temperature much faster this is exactly like how the air conditioner especially the one that they work with the water work this is exactly the same situation so when the blood comes to the capillary of the skin, they can exchange the temperature much easier. But if they goes from this anastomosis, they don't uh, let the uh, blood to go slowly from the skin and they are deeper. They are deeper, so they don't exchange that much. However, in non-apical skin, which is on the trunk and the extremities, uh, they don't have this anastomosis. So when they don't have this anastomosis, they have to pass this system. Uh, but we, we say that there was two major difference between the, the apical skin and non-apical skin. First, in apical skin, the number of these capillaries are much more and they have this anastomosis. However, here they don't have the anastomosis. So how they can control the skin in the non-apical skin, uh, they have to, the sympathetic nervous system by releasing norepinephrine can cause vasoconstriction. So in a cold weather, sympathetic nervous system activated, they constrict the arterioles and venules, so less blood will go to the capillary. However, the mechanism here, they can cause vasoconstriction here. So when they, uh, with the sympathetic nervous system, cause vasoconstriction here, the blood pass from this pathway, so they will not go to the capillary and they pass faster than here. However, during the hot weather, when we are in a very warm environment, uh, the 
uh, acetylcholine release from the uh, acetylcholine will release and the effect on the um, sweet glands and the sweet gland release bradykinin which is vasoactive uh, substance and they cause vasodilation of the arterioles and venous that's why more blood can go to the capillary and exchange uh, temperature with outside uh, so we know all the things that we need for cutaneous circulation and the relationship between the skin color and, uh, and this uh, circulation of the blood in inside the tissue. For example, all of us know that uh, uh, there is some material called melanin inside the basal layer in the melaton melanocytes and they release some substance that they can uh, define the color of our skin. In some people, uh, these melanocytes are less and they have a different color. In some people, the melanocytes are much more. That's why they have darker skin. Uh, but uh, in a physical examination, it's really important to look at the patient's skin to get some information. So if the skin is very pale, it means that that person has less blood uh, inside their circulatory system. Uh, so it shows that the patient might have anemia. Uh, and uh, the other thing is if someone is cold we can see that their skin is pale however in people that they are they have a darker skin it's harder to recognize uh, this different different difference between the pale skin and uh, 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 red reddish skin which is uh, we already explained uh, which we already explained uh, so uh, I think that's all we need to spell still lingers on it was in